pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. President Van Porkley? Here. President Pro Tem Narsh? Here. Council Member Hobbs? Which mic? The left one. This one? I think that one works. This one? Yeah. It's harder for me. <laughs> uh, Council Member um, Lamb? Here. Council Member Luxinger? Here. Council Member Matheson? Here. Council Member Rook? Here. President Van Porkley, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. <laughs> Item four, presentations. We have none. Item five, call to the public on non-agenda items. If you would like to speak to the council on non-agenda, we ask that you keep your duration to five minutes. Anybody like to speak on a non-agenda item? Good evening, sir. Harry Stephen, 311 North Shore. Uh, today and yesterday, I was trying to find the agenda on lakeorion.org. And I think it's almost impossible to accomplish that task. What I did end up doing is going on a search engine and asking for that. And I did find the agenda. And the supporting documents, the packet that you folks received, 267 pages long. I don't think people understand how much information is presented to you and your remuneration for your service doesn't nearly cover that aspect of it. The website in general, lakeorion.org, is not very friendly. The calendar doesn't have anything on it. The last one, and probably people in the audience are not gonna like it, but I plead with you to offer no tax abatements for any of the projects that are coming forth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Please, come on up to the podium, state your name and your address. Hi, my name is Sharon Sedlak, 51 Crescent Avenue, the Korean. Um, the only thing I request is I've come to the past few meetings and I love coming to the meetings. I bet you I hear about 50% of it. Can you get the volumes turned up on just about everybody? This is, I'm trying to project myself because I know sitting back there, normally I can't hear it because people talk like this. If you could turn it up so we could all hear, we'd really appreciate it. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. People in the back, would you agree? Can you? Yeah, it needs to be better. Okay. Great. Thank you. Because we've, we've improved with the sound deadening, the panels that are on the walls. We've improved with the sound deadening, the panels that are on the walls. And, uh, oh, I see. Sorry. I don't have a whole foot. Yeah. And uh, we'll continue, but I appreciate that input, so thank you. Anyone else? Okay. We'll move on to consent agenda. We have 13 items on our consent agenda tonight. Number one is insurance liability and property proposal. Number two is Lake Orion Live Gazebo Concert Series for 2022. Number three is certification of delinquent utility accounts to the 2022 tax roll. Number four is proposed amendments to Village Council Rules of Procedure. Item five, request to purchase radar speed measurement sign. Item six, police department reports May 2022. Item seven, Village Council special meeting minutes May 16th, 2022. Item eight, Village Council regular meeting minutes May 23rd, 2022. Item nine, Village Council Special Meeting Minutes, May 25th, 2022. Item 10, Planning Commission Special Meeting Minutes, May 16th, 2022. Item 11, Planning Commission Regular Meeting Minutes, May 2nd, 2022. <coughs> Item 12, Board of Zoning Appeals Regular Meeting Minutes, April 21st, 2022. And item 13, Board of Zoning Appeals Draft Regular meeting minutes, May 19th, 2022. Entertain a motion. Move to approve the agenda, uh, consent agenda. Support. All those in favor, please. Wait, no, uh, 
Why don't we ask if anybody wants to pull a, an item? Uh, I typically do that first, so I assume you did. But go ahead. Would you like to pull an item? Yes, one and four. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll take an amendment to the motion. I'll remove, remove items one and four. I'll make the amendment to the motion to remove one and four. And I'll amend my support. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have items two, three, and five through 13 in this consent agenda. And then we'll come back to items one and four. All those in favor, please indicate aye. 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 Opposed? Item one, insurance, liability, and property proposal. Ms. Lessinger. Yeah, I would, I would like to see <clears throat> the entire insurance policy before approving this. Um, we got like an overview, but the entire policy would be a couple hundred to several hundred pages, and I would like to look at that, especially um, considering that we're approving um, events against the recommendation of the fire department. So uh, can we get a copy of that insurance policy? Um, usually they send the new insurance policies out once we approve the proposal, but I will ask, I will send, I will contact the insurance agency and ask them to send us a draft on. Okay. Okay, and then one other issue is that we only get a complete policy every other year, and then we get the changed pages on the, on the opposite year. So I'll see what I have, and then I could email you. And, Perfect. You know. I just want to see it, and I, um, if, if it's the off year and you just have the the pages that are amended, yes. just let me know that too. And, okay. Um, so I, I guess I would make a motion to put a pin in this until next meeting. Postpone it to the Postpone next meeting. Postpone it to the next meeting. Okay. I'll support. All those in favor, please indicate aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Item four, proposed amendments to village council rules of procedure. Ms. Washington. Yes. Um, First, I have an issue with putting this on the consent agenda. Uh, according to our rules that have not been modified, um, the consent agenda is for routine items of a routine nature. Changing our procedures is not routine in nature. So I would like to know who put this on the consent agenda? Who made the decision to put it on the consent agenda? Mr. President? Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Um, thank you for having it pulled. It was not our intent to have it on the consent agenda, so I'm not sure where that came from because our direction was to put it on the regular agenda. So thank you for pulling it. We fully agree with that statement. And really, we weren't expecting any type of motion or approval tonight. What we wanted to do is start a dialogue uh, to get your input moving forward to maybe consider additional amendments on top of what we've already proposed uh, so that we can move forward with amendments that you may see as needed or necessary uh, to make the whole process more uniform and fair for everybody uh, to both, you know, put items on the agenda. Um, several things that pop to mind that maybe you might want to consider too is, is removing items for agenda. What's your policy or procedure for that? Um, or, or, or emergency items you need to add to the agenda, which isn't covered by the policy. And you can't possibly cover every single. Uh, no, I, under I understand that. Um, what prompted this opinion letter and the, the the change to the procedure? You know, uh, Ms. Kuchara got a request in, in, from, I think, Mr. Young. I, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, Kuch Ms. Kuchara. Yeah, Ms. Kuchara got a request from Mr. Young after watching um, some council uh, videos from past meetings and comments and frustrations uh, expressed by certain council members at those public meetings. Uh, we thought it, it prudent to maybe try to assist council in their endeavors by maybe cleaning up and defining uh, very precisely what, what rules and procedures so everybody can present whatever project or issue they may want to present in a fair and impartial way uh, with some sort of uh, consent moving forward. So requiring for village council members to approve. 
That's mine. I, do you need me to? Do you need me to take them? <laughs> okay. Um, so requiring four village council members to agree to even put something on the agenda of a non-routine matter is, is what's and it's just a suggestion. If council wants to consider a different standard. okay, so the, the letter you sent is just an opinion. It's just an opinion. There's no. It's there's been no change in law that prompted this. No statutory changes. No case law. No, other than the fact that it appeared to us there needed to be something to move forward with, maybe a refresher on the rules of procedure and, and I don't mean to interrupt you. I just want to make sure that it's clear. There's been no change in law. No that prompted this? No. Just, well, and Mr. Young is not here to, to say whether or not he made that and request. I can't recall, but I, I do know that watch at least the last council meeting uh, based on several comments of different council members from that meeting. Um, that was kind of the onus for moving forward with some, some open dialogue with council to, to look at the rules of procedure and see if we could better those rules or change them or if there were things you didn't like in them to uh, consider, you know, revising them. Okay. Um, well, I do have a problem with the language of the proposal with regards to requiring a majority vote to even get something on the uh, agenda, even if it's in the future. Um, again, this letter was an opinion. Uh, and there's been no change in law. But this is in response to an issue that was unpopular to a majority of the village council members. Uh, that has been stated in the letter we received by the attorney and reiterated um, right now. If we change the procedures and don't have a safeguard to make sure that it's not on the consent agenda or it's in the proper place on the agenda to be discussed, that's a problem. And if we always change it because we disagree or have a heated argue, a debate over something in our village, that's a bad precedent to sit in. And then to require having a majority of the village council to, even, to vote, to even get an issue onto the agenda, that's an issue. Because we're a small community. There are going to be minority viewpoints and uh, unpopular viewpoints, popular to the village council members, um, or issues that are not, we're not even aware of until somebody brings them up. Um, and they need to be discussed. They need to be discussed openly, transparently, and requiring a majority vote to even allow the, a non-routine, um, issue to be put on the agenda. Um, we're already voting on it pretty much. We're voting and saying that issue is not important enough to be discussed at the village council meeting. So if we want to change this, we need to change it, but we need to have a very open and honest discussion about how we're going to change it. So and with regards to how the meetings are conducted, that's the president. The president is in charge of making sure the meetings flow. So if we have a set time for how long people are to talk, we should keep to it. And if we want to reduce that time, so be it. But requiring a vote before we vote, a vote before we even discuss an agenda item, that's not OK. Um, it, it actually inhibits our ability to represent you. Because if there's about 3,000 residents, give or take, in the, Lake Orion, in the village of Lake Orion. So if 2,993 want something on the agenda and they talk to one of us and we bring it to the village council meeting, but four people won't vote on it, or three other people won't vote on it to put it on the agenda, it won't get on the agenda. That's what this is saying. That's my comments. Mr. Narch. Um, and a point well taken, uh, 
that this is advisory and we're to look at that, but I just kind of wanted to clarify, if you would, for us, sir, that um, what you've recommended here, and I've read it, um, are these consistent with Robert's rules of order? They're consistent with other parliamentary procedures adopted by other uh, bodies, municipal bodies, boards, councils, commissions uh, across. This language was taking, taken from an example used by another, I don't know the exact municipality that I took that language from or, or used part of it from. Um, but yeah, it's very standard types of language, at least that part of it is. Um, you say it's standard language yes, no hold on clarification you're not telling us what community well i'm i'm not i'm going somewhere with my line of questioning that's um and you, that was my next question is are there more than one community that have these types of uh standards and procedures there may be i i didn't do that thorough of a search of all the communities in michigan okay understood i found a a, a sampling and um based on that sampling this seemed to fit because of of, of the issues raised but again it, it's to council's discretion what you want to do i don't take a position on it one way or the other it was just thought that um you know if if to have a majority vote to put something on the agenda. If you didn't have a majority vote to put it on the agenda, you probably don't have a majority vote to even pass it at a, a future agenda. So I think that was the logic behind that type of language. Um, but again, okay. And, and, but for the record, I, I wasn't specifically speaking of just that item. Um, I was asking that all of the recommendations in here are to Robert's rules for standard meetings and used commonly in other communities as a as a majority of what you presented to us today i would say so i mean the only other distinction was that um, we distinguish between items of a routine nature and not routine nature um, i don't know if that's extremely common among communities um, but the, the goal and purpose was try to get it out front ahead of time so council could have enough information to make an informed decision well in advance of any future meetings uh, so proper staff could do reports and provide background information for council rather than springing it on council at the last minute and being asked to make a decision that maybe you're not comfortable making without enough information to support that. Um, I wasn't trying to be obstructionist in any way. It was simply a suggestion. Thank you. Ms. Rock. Yeah, a couple um, clarifying things. So my understanding as I read this was that was um, the, f the vote of four members is the addition of items to the prepared agenda, not in advance because on pay packet page 47 under item D, regular meetings, it says to be included on the prepared agenda, an item of business shall be submitted to the village clerk no later than noon on Tuesday preceding the regular meeting. So if a council member has an item that they would like put on the agenda and they have all their documentation, they're supporting things, they can submit it to Susan on the Tuesday beforehand. It doesn't require a vote. It's they submit it and it's there. This with the, the affirmative vote of four members is to help prevent those items being sprung on people without having time to process all the, the information um, as I read it. Unless it's an item like of routine nature that, it, okay, that's easy, you know, we need, sure. But if it's an item that requires a lot more information for us to, to consider, to process, it just gives a safeguard to us that it's not going to be tried, you know, to be sprung on us. And then in those meetings, as I read item number three under seven, so that's under item seven, the first paragraph, addition of items to the prepared agenda shall require the affirmative vote of at least four members of the council. That's the suggested edit. Then there's an additional item number three, items of a routine na of a non-routine nature introduced by members of council for a future meeting. So my assumption, and maybe that just needs some clarification, is that during a meeting, if something comes up, we can simply vote to say, hey, this isn't maybe for this agenda, but let's let's put it on the a future one, or it could be submitted to Susan before by Tuesday of the meeting before. So as I read this. It seemed to me it just was putting some parameters in place for things that are being introduced on the fly, in the moment, here and now. That would require the majority of us to agree to take up at that time. 
But if you have everything already put together, as long as it's in to Susan or by Tuesday of the week before, it's on the agenda. It's there for us to read and then to consider. So um, as I read this, Claire, you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but that is the understanding that I took away from this, that there is a process that any of us could request as long as it's the Tuesday before, but it needs four votes if it's getting added as a last minute agenda item. And then the only other comment I had on this, this is helpful to see this again um, because it's not easy to find. Um, Mr. Stevens, I agree that the, the website isn't always all that helpful um, in finding some things, but I appreciated it because I was one of those people who, um, who had mentioned you know, hey, what are the clear rules and procedures, especially when it comes to taking up items for discussion? And because according to Robert's rules, you know, we've heard, of, you know, we don't have to let the public comment on things, but under our current rules of procedure, under E, item number, EC, I guess it says, you know, council will address items on the approved agenda as follows, presentation, discussion by council, then a call to public for discussion of the item. So nothing on here, tell, there's nothing to say, hey, we don't have to let count the public discuss. No, according to our rules of procedure, we have to let the, the public discuss. So in meetings where it's been said, no, we don't have to, that goes actually against our published rules of procedure. And so that was my big frustration point and why I wanted, why I said I want to make sure we're clear on rules of procedure because I don't want public discussion to be cut off. So, and then after that deliberation and action by council, and that period is un uninterrupted by the public. So um, when we get to that point, then yes. But before that deliberation, before that final deliberation and action happens, the public have to be allowed to comment on agenda items as they come up. So those are my comments. Mr. Lamb. So I agree completely with Councilperson Rutt, and I completely agree with this council person here too. So Luxinger. Luxinger, kind of, Lux that's your name, with the baby, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so my comments are, I do not believe the document the council presented does exactly what you would like it to do. I agree with what you said. I do not believe this document is 100% what that says. Um, the portion where someone appropriately submits an item for the agenda in advance, according to our published rules, is good. At that point, I might suggest that a person that has an agenda item that they want to submit far in advance of the meeting, they have submit it and have a second from another member of the council. So there are two people submitting, that at least two people are going for something, and then we bring it forth to the meeting and the council can then act on it. You can have the up or down. That prevents like one rogue person, you know, putting all kinds of crazy things in front of the council every week. Additionally, I agree that the last minute uh, item agendas for drama and stuff may not be useful and it would be appropriate to have, you know, concurrence of the council to approve any last minute additions either from the audience or from the board. That would, I agree, four people vote, it's on or it's off. But the having four people agree to put it on the agenda is pre-judging and pre-considering a motion. I mean, not a motion, a, a, an item. What's the point of consideration if the council has already decided on an answer? So that's the point of having an agenda and having items for consideration. So the only way I digress with you are, is and I think that perhaps we should just have a, two council people need to present an agenda item in advance, so appropriate time, and then at the council meeting, they can you know, decide, table it, ask for more information, and move it to another meeting. I, I think that's a nice compliment. The second one is public comment. Um, this is where I agree with Councilperson Luxinger. Public comment, I believe I was wrong in the previous meeting um, when I said uh, she wouldn't let Mr. Barnett speak. Okay, but, and I think that public comment is important, but I, I'm, I, I think it's important we're very clear in our rules of the procedure for the president, who's ever, or the president pro tem, or whoever is chairing the meeting, that we go through proper procedure for motion, support, and discussion, and that the council, if there's 100 people to talk about the same thing over and over again, 
that this be controlled and limited so that we have a pleasant and controlled discourse. And then lastly, council said he didn't put this up tonight for decision. He said they just put it up here for, so when Joe, or whoever put it on the agenda, put a recommended motion, he said he put it up tonight for us to study. Um, those are my comments. So. Council? Thank you, yeah, that was my intent, uh, Ms. Rudd, how I think you read. Maybe it wasn't uh, written as cleanly as you said it. Uh, and again, that was the intent to have it on the regular agenda for present, for exactly what was discussed to give us some guidance as to what you think you wanna see with regard to how this policy should take shape or nothing. So I appreciate everybody's comments and I'll go back to the drawing board and, and, and look at that from, uh, from that perspective. I would request um, a list of communities that use this language and where you got it from. Sure. So I'll make a motion to receive and file with the understanding that the attorney's office will comply with questions asked and uh, uh, receive council input. Support. Further discussion? From the from us or from the public? From us. Any Is comments that? from public? <clears throat> Good evening. Hi, Kat Sedlak, 596 Central. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, I'm listening and learning as I go, so I try to make notes instead of just coming with preconceived notions. Um, so, can I just clarify what Teresa said? Six days notice, and if it's after that, four council members have to approve, but before that, it's just, you can just add it? Yeah, you could, you'd submit, there's an agenda request form, agenda item request form that then is submitted to the village administration, to the clerk as she prepares the, the council packet. But if it's after that six days, then it would have to be, um, if we adopted these rules, a special vote to take it up that meeting. Otherwise, if it's not in that six days and it wanted to be added to an agenda, it would be the following agenda. Okay, so if I come to you with a concern mm -hmm. and it's prior to the six days, you can submit that and we can add it as a, an agenda item without the four people. Correct. Okay. Right. And, um, and keep in mind that right now the way it reads is that four people would have to approve it in within that six days. Mm. No, for no, last minute right. items, Incorrect. less than six days, right? Yeah. If it's, well, that's if it what was, I meant. Yeah, it's less if it was within, the day. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, so if it were seven days in advance or however much in advance, I could come to one of you, talk about it, and you could say, yeah, we'll put it on the agenda, and it wouldn't need four of you. Yeah. And what the proposed right. is saying, if you have something that you want to put on the agenda, we would vote on it first no. before putting it on a future agenda. If it was during the meeting, yes. My, my. That, that third point is a little nebulous. I think the way it reads for the future agenda item, if we could just wait and put it on the agenda via the standard procedure anyway. So that's the one for me that needs cleared up. If we're in the middle of a meeting, yeah, we could just, that to me is just like a motion to table it to something, you know. Can I, can I clarify real quickly? I, I'm not sure about your question, but you are always welcome to go to the, the village manager's office and make the request to him. The village manager controls the agenda for the village of Lake Orion. Okay. If he chooses to put some request of your part on the agenda, he may do so without council's permission. He is the, he runs the village. So if you want something like you have a problem, something with your street or you want to do something, you can go directly to the village manager and he can put it right on the agenda if he so chooses. We can take it off if we so choose. Mm -hmm. But rarely do we. Okay, so, so help me understand. That's what I'm looking for. Is what we're talking about mostly is the village council people's initiatives to put items on the agenda. He's usually a little bit more involved or more controversial. So, like routine citizen matters and and things around the neighborhood, the village the village manager's there for you, and he he puts many of these little consent item agendas to have a, a something repaired or a street corrected or something investigated so that's an option available to you okay so what if i what if i came to joe the manager or any of you individually as somebody to, to come talk to you about how things are run like for example we, we don't follow robert's rules we don't we don't follow a procedural anything which i think you 
Teresa brought up a couple of times ago. If I came to talk to somebody about that, just, just talking about this, this part that's on the agenda right now, more than six days in advance, would it need four of you to vote and say we can put it on the agenda or would me as a tax paying citizen coming to you with a concern or coming to Joe with a concern, would it then get on the agenda? Well, the, the village manager actually has the option to deny any agenda item request right now by any council person. Okay, that's okay. why these rules are, are fairly primitive and, and lacking. Did you have anything to say? Council? Oh, did you have anything you want to add, sir? I think the question was posed to the clerk, maybe. Although I can speak to one thing. I know for members of the public, there is a form that mm -hmm. the public can get, download or get it from City Hall and fill it out, and that's an official re request to have the village manager consider putting it on a future agenda, uh, as long as it complies with the time frame. So there's actually a village form for that purpose for, for members of the public to fill out. But Joe can still deny it? There's got to be, I guess, some sort of gatekeeping function when, when there's stuff that would be dilatory or, or not really business that would be before the village council. So there, there does have to be some gatekeeping function. Sure. If I'm talking about passing out marshmallows on the street, I'm sure he can exactly. say we're not going to put that on the agenda. But so, okay, so back to the, the issue at hand, I think. I don't mean to beat a dead horse. I just don't feel like I have an answer. So just help me out here if I missed it. If I, if I come here with a reasonable, and I realize that's a very subjective term, if I come here with a reasonable re request to Joe or to one of you, because I feel like I can talk to one of you and you can put it on the agenda and we can address it, as long as I talk to you about it and it's something that we should all be talking about, again, I know that's subjective, prior to six days, four of you don't have to vote on it for it to be put on the agenda? Correct. Right. Okay. Then I won't, I won't beat this horse anymore. Um, so. Okay. Again, my notes are from everything that I've learned. We don't have an established rules of order here at all. No, we, we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a proposed change to that. To that. Okay. Um, okay. And Mr. Nars, would you like to add something? Or I, I would. Please, I've got tons of questions and I'm trying to organize them. So okay. you might have answered all of them in this dialogue. I just, I, I, I've just, I've been involved in small government for 40 years and I hear your frustrations and also your questions. And I would encourage the public all the time, and this, this happens all the time, and I've experienced it. So someone comes in and they'll go to the village manager, <clears throat> excuse me, and they'll say, I have a question about DPW procedure or uh, police procedure or they'll bring it up at a meeting. Um, all those doors are always open and a lot of times the information that you're seeking, um, and this goes to everybody in the public, come see us, give us a call, call the manager, um, they're the, the gatekeeper for the whole village and then you start posing your question, he or she is going to come back with, you know what, that's a great question for the police chief. Um, and this comes up in council meetings all the time and then they're deferred back to you know, give it the police chief, give it the DBW director. Um, and then I would say in, in my career, 99, 98% of everything that was a concern is resolved by those department heads um, who are running those departments to the satisfaction of the person asking the question. Uh, <clears throat> if it's an issue that they can't resolve or there's a request to change a procedure or a policy, then that's something that would go back to the manager for a possible discussion by this group. But um, I, I, I've always said, I, please, you know, call the chief, call the DDA director, call the, the manager if that's in their bailiwick. And you'd be surprised what information you can get um, and that they will be gladly come out and help you um, in those areas. And if it's something obviously different policy procedure, um, definitely come see the manager. Yeah, I, I certainly respect that answer and I think that would that's a great answer. I just, I guess, what is the purpose in response to that? What is, what is the purpose of this proposal then? Like my, where, where did this arise from? Um, my opinion is that uh, you, if you've been to some council meetings, we've drifted back and forth and whether we have maintained our parliamentary uh, position uh, is always in discussion. But I think sometimes, at least for me, um, I, I don't mind having that 
uh, discourse back and forth. I mean, I always had an open door, and if, trust me, half the people uh, you arrested at a domestic violence in my career loved you, and the other half hated you. <laughs> it just depends whether it was mom or dad going to jail. But give us a call. Let's have that conversation. Um, and I think sometimes when it happens up here, it can get uh, a little volatile, and what we're trying to do is get back to a little more decorum on the rules of debate, uh, including, uh, and I raised this question the other day, I was thinking about it, council comments. I mean, can I sit up here and give you a four and a half hour council comment? Um, I don't think it's fair to everybody, but I think that uh, council comments are like a five minute thing, just like public comment. And uh, I think that's fair to everybody in the room. Um, so those kind of things, if we don't make that a um, kind of Robert's Rules. And, and keep in mind, I've, I've worked on other communities as well and their councils follow those same kind of rules. Um, they can be a little bit different, but they all kind of follow time frames or we'd be here till four in the morning. I, I think my concern is alleviated by hearing, and I'll have to read this to independently verify it, which I've done none of prior to this, but I, my concerns are alleviated by hearing that as long as, my comments or whatever is addressed prior to that six days, it doesn't need a council vote to suddenly be added. I think that was my biggest concern. If it's within that five days or six days or whatever, I don't think it's as much of a concern because before that I was concerned about why we wouldn't just have the dialogue and put it up for discussion. So, but it, it sounds like maybe that's not an issue. Well, no, I, I think, I think uh, council, the term you used earlier is not meant to be punitive. I thought that that, I'm sorry? No, it's not. <laughs> right. And so uh, really what we're looking to do with this is to get additional and correct information uh, so that we can have the proper debate. Okay. And so when it comes to us two days prior or one day right. prior to the actual meeting, and and we've even had it where it's on our table right here. We haven't had time to study. And that's where we'd like to be able to say we'd like to move this to the next meeting. Okay, and so it's strictly, strictly within that, that. St uh, sorry, strictly within that six day yeah. time frame that yeah. we're, okay. Yeah. May I make a comment? Yes, Ms. Austin. Um, you bring up a very good point that you know, you, you're here and you, you're just asking questions because you don't know. A lot of people come to village council meetings with something they have to say that they need to discuss with the village council. Um, and they don't know the rules, pri you know, all of these Roberts rules. So this change, this proposed change um, that those um, non-routine introduced by members of council for further, for future meetings, you know, if you said something and I made a motion, you know what, I would like to be able to hand out marshmallows down the road um, in order for it to even be put on a future meeting to, for discussion, we would need four, four votes. That's what this proposed is. Even though it's more than six days? No, 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 if you came to the meeting, like if you just said right now that okay. you wanted to hand out marshmallows. Okay. It, we would have to, that's just, it's like widgets, you know, um, let's say it was something important. Maybe marshmallows were really important to this community. Um, we would have, we would need a majority vote to even he, to discuss it further. And what the, pro, what the problem is with what um, uh, the president said, what you said is that it's to make sure that we have all the information. That's one of them. Right. Go ahead. But, but we're voting on whether or not we're going to, the proposed rule would be that we're voting before we have that information as to whether or not we're going to discuss it at a future meeting. So we don't have any of the information that you're requesting to discuss in the future. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Rock. Yeah, um, it, to, to clarify that, it's just, hey, I want to put marshmallows on this meeting today. Right. And I would say, no, I don't have the information Four of us, you know, we don't have, it's not that we're saying, no, this isn't important to discuss. It's, it's important enough to discuss that I can't discuss it right now. It doesn't preclude you from then, tomorrow, submitting the agenda request form for the next meeting. So it's not preventing that. It's just saying, 
I don't have it right now. It's important enough that I need to have the information right now. So no, I'm not going to take it up at this agenda on this meeting. Right, but even for the future, to put um, a non-routine item on a future. That's what I said was a little bit nebulous for me, the procedure for that, like why that, that piece is there. Um, because we have the provision that as long as it's six days before, you know, the Tuesday before. So I'm, I'm a little unsure of what this exactly is supposed to be because it just seems like a simple like, Let's table that to the next meeting. Type You're of thing. pointing at yeah. three. I admit three. May I yeah. ask? And I, I wrote this down a couple of times. What is routine? I keep hearing routine and non-routine, and maybe I'm super ignorant here, but I feel like that's again really. Simple. What is routine and non-routine? I feel like routine could be something like, oh, we forgot to put the electrical bill for one of our parks on the, you know, in there. Yep, that's a routine thing. We're going to pay that bill. So I feel it's something like that versus, hey, we want to throw a mad marshmallow party here in right. Village Hall in two weeks. <laughs> so it's incredibly subjective. Is, is there any is there anything anything that can help me with this routine things? I, I wrote this down. You mentioned a lot, and I am interested in looking that up. Uh, Mr. Chair, or Mr. President. Yes. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned routine that much. I, it's mentioned yeah. two or three times in there. Well, I wasn't trying uh, to attack you. I just it was something that I honed in on. And would would council be inclined to consider maybe taking a look at a draft model? To, and I didn't want to complicate things. I certainly that was not the intent. The Understood. intent was to try to simplify things, and it seems based on discussion, maybe it's gone the other way. Would you rather consider maybe a draft of a from a a reliable uh, parliamentary Roberts rules draft? There's model rules and procedures out there for councils across the country. If that's something council and maybe there's something out there, there's a better uh, a better mechanism to do business and if in simpler than maybe what we're discussing this evening, I'd be happy to come back to council with that too. Well, and I, I I'm just going to jump in and say in my motion, that's what I recommended, is that we toss that back to you. Um, we haven't got to the vote on that, but it, my motion was to defer back to council and have you bring us additional information from other communities, perhaps identify those communities, how many, that type of thing. So really what you're saying is exactly what I think the motion uh, is asking. And I was gonna follow up with one other thing, and again, this goes back to the public. And this is why I say it, it, talking to the manager or department head can really help. Okay. And, and I'm gonna go down the government road, and I hate saying that because I, I'm like Jerry, I'm not government, but for four years I guess I've been government. But here's what happens, you come in and you say, I wanna throw a marshmallow party tomorrow. Um, it all sounds good, but the minute a government body approves that, then we got to make sure that you have a permit from the health department, that the marshmallows, if they're individually wrapped, they have to be certified. If they're not individually wrapped, then it's an item the health department would have. So there's so many regulations that we have to make sure that the public's health and safety is taken care of that when it's thrown quickly on an agenda, it doesn't give us time to do the due diligence that by law we have to do. So let me ask, and I, I did want to ask this, and I still want to res respond to, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, Councilman. I, oh, that's the village, village attorney. attorney. The village, village attorney, attorney. I'm yes. sorry, what is your name? Nick. Nick. <laughs> oh, sorry, Nick. Um, I, I do want to ask you another question, but I, so if, I, if something is on the agenda, something is being voted on, it's not just being discussed? It's, it's 100, if I were, again, I'm, this terrible example, marshmallows, if, if I come to you and want to talk about it, it's, it's going to be voted on and not just discussed? At the, if I want to put it on the agenda? On, what, if it's on an agenda, then it's going to be voted on or okay. discussed. It could be tabled, it could be moved based on new information. But what it gives staff the ability to do is does this require, uh, require a legal review? Is it a change in something that we need legal review? Okay, we're gonna to have to have the attorney look at it. Is this something that's gonna take additional police staffing? Okay, it's gotta to go to the police department to recommend it for staffing because is that budgeted? Do we have to do a budget amendment to provide additional staffing? Is additional garbage receptacles or street signs gonna be needed to close down a the street? Then it's gotta to go to the DPW for their review. All of that comes back 
legal opinion, department head reviews, the manager gets that back, puts it on the agenda. That's why we say we need that time because every time a council agenda comes on, yeah. almost every single time, one of those departments are gonna be involved. So it has to go to that department head. Can you do this? Is it, um, the village manager cannot speak for the police department, nor can the police chief speak for the DPW. So, so if I wanna, just <clears throat> your example, made me think of an actual legitimate example instead of marshmallows. If I, if I wanted to come to you and say, hey, a lot of us live on the lake. I think we have a huge trash issue. Uh, there's, I'm picking up recycling and, and trash out of my yard and out of people's yards in the lake because we have open recycling bins. And if I want to say, hey, I'd like to get a closed recycling bin, obviously I could go do that myself. But if I just brought that and I said, hey, I think that we should provide these to everybody so that way we don't have as much trash in the lake. What you're telling me is I sh what I should do is instead of bringing it up here, I should go to the, Joe, village manager. the village manager, talk to him and ask him to put it on the agenda? Because it's a great idea. What he would do is contact our waste provider and say, hey, do you guys have the flip type top closer? I got to believe in windy communities. Call Chicago. Okay. What do they do? Right. But that's what he would do. He'd contact our waste provider. He would look into it. Uh, or she, and they would contact other providers, see if it's an option, then they would get back to you. Um, if there's gonna be an increased cost, that cost is gonna be passed on to every member of the village. So if the waste provider is gonna say, yeah, we can do that for you, but it's $4 extra a bin, um, okay, so the village has gotta pay that, so that, that cost is gonna go on, that's gonna raise everybody's. So then, is there a dollar value? To this and does so that, that impact rate, it would be brought to you and that would on. be brought to us so then we can look at it hear from you look at the impact from the department heads what the manager's review was and then know how to accurately respond and, and keep in mind the manager would call you back and let you know that and you might go oh forget that it's a 75 dollar sure. bin sure we're yeah. discussing it yeah let's come up with a new idea so that's yeah. the better route than coming here but the whole back to the whole this issue at hand the six days is not as long as you address it before six days, it can be addressed. It doesn't have to take four of you. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. And then just back to discussing with Nick, I still, I, I didn't mean to be super confrontational. I just, st I still feel like I don't have an answer for the word routine. And I just don't, is there a place, and you can direct, direct me and say, go look it up. Here's where you look it up. I just... I'm very confused and I feel like it's being thrown around like it's a definitive objective thing. If I may, I think that's yeah. what the council and the attorney's office is gonna come that's up with. That's what you're saying they need that's to That's what up. we're gonna do. Okay. All right, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Rock. I have a very brief final comment. Um, just as a thing, yes, every item has some type of action taken. It may be as simple as receive and file information, but there has to be some action on an item uh, that does come onto the agenda. But then in regards to, you know, you, you asked like, you know, different formats. I'm in general, just me personally, comfortable with this, not item number three, that new red lined item, because that's confusing to me. I'm comfortable with some of the other changes. And just as a point of clarification, just so everybody knows too, so these are rules of procedure, how we have uh, agreed um, with proposed amendments to conduct our meetings. And then in absence of that, Robert's rules does take over parliamentary procedures, so order of motions and things like that, that prevails um, in, if there's no other, if there's not something that's clear in here, the Robert's rules does, does prevail, um, just as a point of clarification for the public, so. Well, and, and, and our procedures have to comply with state law. Correct. Anybody else? Hi. Uh, one moment, please. We'll listen to this gentleman here. Oh, Don Connery, 745 Central Drive. Uh, just so I got this clear, none of you asked the village lawyer to draft this information. Is that correct? Council? I did Were you, Did you I receive did a request by anybody? Any council counsel? members? We received some suggestions from council members and when posed to the village manager, he thought it was a good idea. So it did come from somebody on the council. I wouldn't say Because I just find it interesting if Joe does it and we've got to go to Joe to get something put on the agenda and he says no and we come to the council and all of a sudden we have to have four people. Yeah, it kind of looks like maybe he's got a way of stifling the public's will. And, and to answer the question for council, Mr. President, if I may, the language was purely our creation. It didn't come from a council member. 
We simply said it might be a good opportunity to look at the procedures and policies to consider doing something that might uh, direct council with adding items to the agenda at a future meeting. It, in the language was from our office. It wasn't from any council right, right. member. And again, the, the public is not prohibited, sir, from asking for an agenda item. It's just that it's looking to be prepared properly. So if it's submitted six days in advance, it can become an agenda item. No, I understand it can be that. Prepared part. properly. Mr. Narch? Yeah, I was just going to comment. I, I think our information is public, it's out there. Um, and again, I, I, I'm not speaking for all the council members, I'm just saying myself, but I, I think they would agree with this comment. If you email us, call us, uh, stop and say hello, and you got a concern or a question, we're going to filter that through what we kind of know about how to best help you. And if that's, you know what, um, that is a concern. Or you know what, from history I can tell you this, um, not that that will satisfy you, but we may end up saying, you know what, that's something I think you need to take to the manager and let's pursue this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have to call four council members, call a special meeting and vote just to guide you to get help. Agreed. That's never going to happen. So, you know, I want to hear from people. I want to hear, you know, um, that's my job. And, you know, we, and I think at the end of the day, Everybody here, every department head wants to help everybody in the village to the best of their ability, but remember that government affects everybody we serve. So at no time can we say, okay, we're gonna do this just for you. So it has to be, you know, which makes it hard sometimes. It's like, well, I just, I want those two police officers in front of my business making sure nothing happens to it. Well, we've gotta do that for every business. Sure. So, so there's those kind of things, but we'll always get your concern addressed either by the manager, the department heads, or this body. Well, I understand that. But sometimes you make decisions and you put hard numbers on there and you don't think of the consequences that come after that. As for example, in the draft that you proposed there, the statement was for the public, if they want to get something put on the agenda, they need four council members. It also says if you have a quorum, so if you've got a quorum and you don't have all seven members and maybe there was five and enough for having a meeting, now I've got to get four out of five. Whereas when you turn around and talk about council members and they need to put something on the agenda, you said the majority. So when you're putting a finite number on and the other one you're saying the majority and the two of them should match. They shouldn't be different. And my motion, sir, is tonight that we're about to vote on mm -hmm. is to bounce that back to him. We've heard sure. from the public, we've heard from council. Yeah. And I think there's going to be a different boiled product coming out of this. This is the first we saw it in advance yeah. when we got our packets. This was language and information uh, from our attorneys that were suggestions and guidelines from other communities. Well, that's whether should concern you too, right? If we've got to give six days notice for you to see it and he can provide something to you the day before and now you're here getting ready to vote? No, this was Shouldn't received be. six days Previous. We, we got this. Okay. So that's what I'm saying is that was prepared in advance. So all that information is so we don't get it the day of the meeting. But we want to make sure that everybody has that. That's this discussion here tonight. And that's what he's listening, what we're listening. <coughs> and I think the other difference to the right. On Friday, but it may be. Yeah, it's usually Thursday or Friday we yeah, get our we packets. Friday this time. And the other difference in the way it was written was that if council is going to add something to the agenda, they need to provide the information and the cost and the business model and what it went. It doesn't say that for the public. So I just well, want you to know the way it's written isn't clear. I know that you asked for clarification. There's the majority, there's the finite numbers, there's what council's got to do versus what the public's got to do. It needs to be reworked. And, and, I and, hope that you and just so you know, sir, that. not to interrupt, but just so you know, if you suggest something to the manager, the manager's job before he brings it to us is then to apply the cost factor. That's what he's going to, he or she is going to do. They're going to look at this and say, I remember a motion came to this body several years ago to dome the village. Yeah. I'm not concerned about any specific right, right. topic, but the just manager, about how it comes on to the Yeah, agenda. the manager then will assess what, what the anticipated cost is so we have that information. So that's their job. Um, even though the public might bring it in, it's a great idea, but what does it cost for the company? 